What's up, my ninjas? This is Strident, and I am back with another uh, answers video. Um, I am. I've been actually going back and forth a little bit with uh, Rasuke. Uh, we've been trading our ideologies on Blade, and I pretty much my my air, my point is why the uh, the anime sucks. Um, I just wanted to. You know, say, you know, I think it's cool that you are a fan. I think it's awesome. You got some cool stuff. Um, I'm glad that it's more of a, uh, you're not doing the whole fake and gay, whack and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's stupid. It's gay or whatever. You know how YouTube usually is. We're not going through that. This is more of a, you know, a discussion. Um, I, uh, I do think that from your video I see that you didn't get some of the points that I was making and the main point that I was trying to make about the anime and how Blade is handled in general um, and what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to you know get that part out let you know where I'm where I'm coming from and uh, you know hopefully this will be the last one because you know I love going back and forth you know but uh, I'd love to go back and forth about something else because the anime, I've already stopped watching. I stopped at uh, episode four. And uh, like I said before, there's not much to make me want to go any further. My, o my overall point is that the anime uh, doesn't reinvent the wheel. And uh, I was pointing out things that, you know, you said that the contrary is true. For instance, you said, and you and you defended it, you know, pretty fiercely. But the the fact is, you said that Blade hasn't evolved. But then you brought out books that show over the years how the character. I mean, it's a visual medium. And you showed us how the character has changed over the years. They said not much has changed about him except for his clothes and you know some of the things that he fights and you know not much. Because as a character, he's already set, and that's who he's going to be, kind of like Batman. But visually, the character has evolved. You showed us an evolution in print. It exists. It's on paper. He evolved a little bit in the, in the movies. I'm not saying that this evolution was, like, the best evolution. I'm not even saying that it's a complete evolution. I'm just saying that Marvel and various writers have made changes to the character to the point where... Uh, He's even like a, a black exploitation, uh, stereotypical, you know, character again. Um, actually, I shouldn't say again, but now he's become one of those characters. Um, I'm not happy with the evolution, not by any means, but the evolution is there. Um, I agree that a lot of those things that you pointed out that um, were part of your fan fiction and things you imagined for Blade. I agree, those things actually make sense. He should have some type of company backing him. The movie shows that he takes over and liquefies the assets of, or the movie, it doesn't show it, but in the dialogue he explains it. Pretty much when he beats people, you know, these, these rich vampires, he takes over all their stuff, liquefies their assets and moves on. So they show you one way he funds things, but it would be cool if there was like a a legal way that he's actually protecting and helping mankind past just killing vampires. Um, you mentioned that uh, the you didn't like the fact that he only fought vampires, but that's like watching a sword fight and being mad that everyone's using swords. You said you you like Blade the Vampire Hunter, the supernatural things. Uh, besides vampires do exist in his world he doesn't always fight them but from time to time he does fight them and then he goes on to do what his his chosen path or his chosen profession is and that's hunting vampires this is not Buffy where in Buffy she fought everything and rarely ever fought vampires and that was annoying at least for me you know because there's a lot of people that love Buffy to death they even go so far as to say she could beat Blade and that's you know people smoking that stuff but everyone's entitled to their whatever their opinions you know I'm not trying to straight up just you know diss uh, 
people, but, you know, absurdity is absurdity, and that's one of the more absurd perspectives. Um, you uh, brought out all these animes to show me your, uh, you know, your knowledge of anime and how long you've been looking at anime and everything, but you pointed out that certain animes explain a little bit and don't explain, you know, other things. Now, I think you, you, you misunderstand what I'm saying by explaining. Exposition can happen in a number of ways. I'm not saying the Metal Gear exposition where you sit down for an hour and listen to somebody talk at you and give you information. No, it works in Metal Gear because it's a game. The narrative is presented in a completely different way. What I am saying is when you do watch shows like Ghost in the Shell, Yes, I understand that they don't explain why the chick's naked, but it's anime. That's one of those things that anime, unfortunately, is known for. But they do show you, they showcase tech and how things work. That's what I'm talking about. I understand that anime has poor, a lot of animes have poor storytelling and things happen just for the sake of happening or because somebody thought it would be cool or it would, uh, it would be uh, controversial, so they do those things. And, you know, fine, more power to them. But what I'm saying is a character who scientifically breaks down how to deal with vampirism and how to fight vampires should have a more uh, tactical outlook and a more tactical direction as far as how the series goes. We should be seeing him coming up with new weapons, new devices, new everything, you know? There should always be like some type of tech person like you mentioned, a hacker, something. And he should be talking, he should be cataloging, like you said, every vampire he comes across, every version, every variety of vampire or whatever that he comes across, he should be cataloging it and coming up with a battle plan or contingency plan as to how to deal with these things. And when I say explanation, that's what I mean. Or like if they introduce like the Aswang that they showed in uh, uh, episode three, I think it was when they were on their way to the Philippines or episode four, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was three. Um, Instead of just saying, they're flying vampires, that's obvious. They should have told us a little bit more in the downtime that you might have to deal with this. You know, when uh, Van Helsing was talking to Makoto, he could have mentioned to, to her and even the crew, we're going to this region of the world and this is the type of whatever that you find there. You know what I mean? And there's your little bit of information about the the... The, the new monster that you're going to deal with here you know that's what i mean when i say explanation exposition more is what i should have said there should be more exposition and more of a showcase of the tech and the things that these characters wear i mean makoto doesn't even have a good shtick as far as vampire hunting goes she's not well-rounded i mean she carries a machine gun every now and then and she's got brass knuckles Ooh, that's that's amazing not really um like i said on my uh on DeviantArt, I was, someone was, we were talking about this, and I said, if she could fight, like, Donnie Yen and Jet Li combined, then I'd buy it. But her being that way, just because she's Japanese, and they didn't even bother to design things to aid her in her fight, yeah, no. And I'm not just going to buy it because that's the way that Japan does things. Yes, I know Japan has the superiority and the inferior com inferiority complex. Yes, I know. Dragon Ball. When they're Asian, they're not so powerful. But when they're, uh, you know, blonde hair, blue eyed, they can destroy planets. I get that. But, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean I'm going to accept it. It doesn't mean I think it's right. I understand the the psychology behind some of these things. By a lot uh, behind a lot of it, I understand the philosophies of a lot of the designers. A lot of it I don't agree with. I think it's complete bullshit. But. It doesn't mean I'm just going to sit there and be like, oh, yes, it should be like that because this is how they've done it. No. And like we said in the thoughts video from the beginning, we said that just by looking at her, we knew she was going to be the character that uh, the Japanese public was going to identify with because she was inserted that way. We knew they were going to put her on Blade's level, even though there was no reason that she should be on Blade's level. I mean... This is a world where they clearly state that a Dampier is all the strengths, none of the weaknesses. But then they put a human being with minimal fighting ability, mar I, I won't even say minimal, 
marginal fighting ability on Blades level, and he's like King Dingling of all vampire hunters, so much so that even all the vampires are afraid of him. Yeah, that's not consistent storytelling. That's just, it's poor on every level. And as a fan and as someone who writes, you got to be aware of these things. And I'm just calling it from the objective point of view. This is what's in front of me. This is what's wrong with what's in front of me. Not my my bias, not my uh, expectation. I'm just saying this is, it doesn't work. If you wrote the story, people would point that out to you. I think if you wrote it, you would not let these things go. You would explain or have a good reason or you would showcase why somebody was a badass. You wouldn't just do it because that's the way it's been done forever. Um, another thing is that with black superheroes, and this was something I was trying not to get into, but you brought it up in your movie, your uh, video, and it makes sense because it applies in this case. Um, black superheroes often are misrepresented. Black people are misrepresented in comics and in mainstream media. It's it's all the same. And if we are successful at something then it gets downplayed over the years and Marvel is like notorious for this they don't put the same um, the same level of respect or heart into their comics that feature black leads um, if you notice with the Marvel movies they always uh, discredit Blade as the first Marvel movie like successful Marvel movie and anyone who went to see the movie knows this because they made three of them you know, and they did this before the Spider-Mans and before the X-Men, and you know, it's because of Blade 1 and 2 that they were like, hey, we could do all the rest of them, and Blade was not an A-lister, so it's, it's not some conspiracy type deal, it's the truth, this is how it is. Characters like Black Panther, Black Panther's getting married, who is he gonna get married to? I remember calling it when I first saw it, they're gonna make him marry the only other African female out there, and they did it. They made him get married to Storm, and they came up with a bullshit backstory, and it was that simple and that racist that they just kept it in, in, in that area. Africans with Africans, because that's the way that it works. And all of us know a couple Africans that married white girls or married Asian women or married whatever, and, you know, that's just not the way it always is. Um, who else? Black Mar or The Blue Marvel. More powerful than Sentry probably one of the most powerful if not the most powerful uh, person in the Marvel Universe on the planet Earth not in the entire Marvel Universe but Earth-bound Marvel characters he was like one of the most powerful and he's gone he had a little mini series and brought up some interesting stuff and then he's back into obscurity a lot of these writers don't know how to write black characters they make race the cent the central point of uh, attention and that's not how it should be um, and Blade is no different. Blade's evolution has stayed, you know, stagnant in some ways because they only evolve his visual appeal and the attitude stays the same. And sometimes it gets worse. Like, I did mention when you talked about evolution, I mentioned uh, Ultimates and how Blade was in there. Now, I read those books and I mentioned it just to show you that there he's been doing things. He's been doing more than just you know, the stuff that we all remember. He's in other kinds of stories dealing with other heroes. I'm not saying that those those stories were well done because there hasn't been a good Ultimate story since Ultimates 2. And uh, some of the, the annuals that were coming out around that time dealing with that portion of the Ultimates universe. Since Ultimates 2 and all that stuff, they, they've been crap. And this includes the, the latest installment where Blade is on the team and they have two teams of Avengers and yeah Blade's getting beat up by uh, guys in Iron Man costumes and Captain America fights the whole vampirism thing yeah I mean in the beginning of that one they got Blade laying with three women a white one an Asian one and a black one just like in the beginning of uh, Black Dynamite if that tells you anything about how they're dealing with these these characters it's not cool, and I'm not happy with it. So when I'm pointing out that there is an evolution, once again, I'm just saying that it exists. I'm not happy with what they did, and I think that we could do better. From hearing your ideas, I know you could do better, too. So I think, all in all, you misunderstood where I'm coming from with this stuff. You, you pointed out the mythological creatures, but then you point out 
on paper that he did fight mythological creatures, just not as much as he fought vampires. It makes sense. You know, I'm going to a chili cook off. I don't expect to be eating uh, hot dogs. It's a chili cook off. You know, if they're going to grill hot dogs, that might be a bonus, but I should be getting more chili than hot dogs. You know, it just makes sense. So, these are a couple things that I think were misconstrued in what I was saying, or maybe it didn't come across. Also, you pointed out the, the Western perspective. None of that had anything to do with what I'm talking about with this anime, because this anime is a Western character. It's a it's a it's an Eastern company regurgitating Western a rest Western character, and they're not really doing anything new to this character. Everything that they are doing in this in this anime with Blade, as far as his origins and stuff, it's exactly the same. Even his attitude is exactly the same as it's been. So I don't understand what's being reinvented and what's being so, you know represented so differently in this to make you you know feel like it's new he, he, he operates a little bit differently where he doesn't use his guns which I don't agree with I mean a gun's a tool if you're a hunter you got tools why would you limit yourself only to the one thing that you you mastered a gun is a long-range weapon you're not always gonna be able to throw something and that's what guns are for you know it's a logical progression of combat you know, all weapons are an extension of the, the body. So a gun is, is no different. No one's saying to make him a pure gunner. What I'm saying is, just like in the movies, it just works, you know? And if it's not broken, you don't need to fix it. So that's my perspective on that part. And it's not going to change because I think, you know, characters like Batman, it's not like he only uses batarangs to fight ninjas that use throwing stars you know it's not like he only uses his uh grapple gun for swinging you know he finds creative ways to use it in battle arkham asylum i mean arkham city shows that too and there's several cartoons and movies where you see him use the grapple gun to do other stuff besides just swinging from point a to point b so to to limit a character just because his focus is the is one weapon i think that doesn't make sense I agree with you, he should be the most powerful swordsman in the Marvel Universe, just by far. I agree, that's the way it should be, but he's black, so they're not going to do it, you know? And that sucks, but this is the way it is. I mean, this is what they've been doing with Bruce Lee-inspired uh, characters in anything coming out of Japan, except for Fist of the North Star. They typically make the Bruce Lee character inferior to the Japanese character. Um... The Japanese characters are usually more powerful and whatnot. It's just because of the fact that Bruce Lee used to point out the racism that was going on in China during Japan's occupation. Um, it happened. It's a fact. They don't like it, so they keep trying to change it. It's just like, you know, when people talk about uh, World War II and they, they're talking about Japan. A lot of things happened to Japan and they didn't do so well, but when you see it regurgitated in anime, it, the stories are always told differently. You know? I just learned... And I don't know how I missed this, but this, the uh, I watched Space Battleship Yamato or Yamoto the other day, and I didn't really know too much about that whole situation. And I, I read up on it, and I'm like, wow, so the ship was supposed to be amazing, but it got destroyed. But when you watch and you read about these things from the Japanese perspective, it's as if this thing went and destroyed everything and nothing could could touch it you know what i mean so there's there's definitely an issue with telling stories and perspective and you know i'm cool with people exaggerating the perspective of certain things and taking things in another direction but with blade where they were supposed to do that they didn't and that's what my issue is with this uh you mentioned the strength and technology and all this stuff and none of that has anything to do with what i'm talking about with blade because i want them to put those kind of spins on this but they didn't they just regurgitated what we already had. And when you were pointing this out, I'm like, you're furthering my point. And I was wondering why you were even going in that direction. So, overall, it's just that there's a lot of things that they could have done that they're not doing. And I, I guess some of it falls back on the fact that we got a black main character. Um, Marvel doesn't really think highly of Blade, maybe. Um lazy design lazy writing lazy uh, uh animation you know i know it's a budget but there's other series out there like grappler baki it was a series 
had good animation and like really good animation for those fights I mean where are they spending this money you know what I mean like there's no excuse for that Giant Robo had 8 parts instead of 12 and the animation was superb all the way through what's the deal with Blade and this is exactly what I complained about with the comics the comics usually have decent stories with shitty artwork you know or like a, a generic design for Can all their Peter black characters. I mean, like what you said about Marvel's characters being way, their black characters being way inferior to the DC's black characters. It's so on point because all of Marvel's characters are ball headed black guys that sport goatees and tattoos and not much else. I mean, Luke Cage looks just like Blade except he doesn't have all the tats. Um, Bishop looks just like Blade except he has the M tattooed over the side of you know the one side of his face it, and I can keep going the only person who doesn't follow in, fall into that is uh, Black Panther so it, it's clear that they don't care about these characters like that oh and Rhodes I forgot he doesn't kind of fall into that but the majority I think he did at a point in time though so overall I'm just saying that there were changes he has done some certain things um, I'm not saying that he did them like, you know, I'm not saying the changes were the kind of changes I would make, um, but they are changes. Anyone who, if someone wasn't a fan and they saw these things, they'd say, oh, the character's not exactly the same as he was when he started. His attitude is, but he doesn't look that way and he doesn't fight the same way and he uses different weapons and things have changed. The quality of how they did these things, that's the part where, you know, when you go and you put it under further scrutiny, you realize that that's where we have a problem. You know, um, you say you mentioning the, the, the mythology stuff. I mean, it's all well and good when it works, when it makes sense. But just throwing in, let's make Blade fight a harpy. It has to fit in the overall, you know, story. You know, let's make him fight a demon. It has to fit. And so far they've done it when it kind of fit. You know, there's lots of examples of that. Um, it's not as much as the vampires, but it would defeat the purpose if it was only demons and he's a vampire hunter once again you know it's like this is what you're supposed to expect you know when you go into this so um you know those are the those are the points the anime does not reinvent the wheel it just regurgitates stuff and it doesn't even do it in a, a new interesting way and to me as a fan we have to acknowledge this if you like the the way it was all put together then you like it you know but if you uh if you're a fan and you know you're, you're aware of where he's been and where he's going you should be aware that these stories have been told before you know um the whole thing about western and eastern perspective that's all well and good and nice when it applies but in this case they mentioned it as a point on paper but then when you watch the thing there really isn't that much of this perspective thrown in you know it's more of the same with a couple anime tropes thrown in and that's it that's all you get as far as your eastern perspective you know and if you like it it's for you because they are trying to hit some certain uh demographics but if you don't like it, it doesn't work for you you know and that's just it's plain and simple and for me it does not work it's not consistent enough and it's just not this isn't the, the proper to me it's not the proper franchise to take in that direction when they have things in blade books that are uh, solidified and that should always be there you know like they have ways that blade deals with certain things they have characters that have been introduced that always are a certain way like why write Whistler out of the story. Whistler's an awesome character because he's not generic at all. He was initially, but he's not since the movies. And they keep trying to find ways to get him out of the picture. You know? Things like that bother me. And I don't see, you know, I mean if you tell a good story and that's in there, then hey, props to you. But if you if 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 what we have is a lame story and you're just trying to reinvent the wheel in a in a mundane kind of way you know because like if you notice all the things that they did change are things that they just replaced what was already there with their own generic version of what was there whistler is more interesting than van helsing i'm sorry he's a regular guy who went through some shit and he figured out a way to deal with vampires and he's good at it but you get rid of him because he's not 
a stereotypical Englishman and he's not, you know, something stereotypical from vampire movies and vampire lore, you know? I personally just get tired of the stereotypes and I know that's how anime is, but to me, in a show where the main character is a black guy who has stereotypes against him, I don't want to see a billion stereotypes in this thing. That just gets old for me. So anyway, in closing, I like the fact that we're able to go back and forth and it's, you know, it's civilized. It's not some annoying YouTube generic, uh, you know, argument. It's fake and gay. It's stupid. It's blah, blah, blah. Like they always do. That shit gets so tired. You know, I love the fact that there's other fans of Blade out there. You know, we need more because that way Marvel will finally see that he's worth, you know, upgrading and doing more with him. Maybe one day we'll be able to work on it and, and make him that the way he, he should be. Um, the pictures you see up here are, these are all sketches I did for the Blade pitch that a friend of mine that's a professional writer, he's written for Marvel, him and I worked together on this stuff, and then I saw Blade 3 and I lost all my steam because Blade 3 was horrible. And I saw the new comic, the new Tomb of Dracula that came out right after Blade 3 came out, and that even further helped me lose my steam wanting to even touch this franchise when I saw how garbage that series was. So, you know, maybe some other day I will get motivated enough and inspired enough to do a better job as a, the artist for one of those books than the artist that they currently have. So, anyway, check that out. Um, there's more details, a little bit more details about this on my DeviantArt page, and that's really all I gotta say. So, thanks, Ra. Um, thanks to everyone else who's been watching and paying attention to all this stuff, you know. I uh, appreciate the comments and the attention, and uh, I guess I will see you guys later. Peace.